Hello everyone, welcome back to Balrog's Boxer Basics, and we're doing a prequel. This is going to be episode 0, where I just talk about Balrog's kit, game plan, specials, normals, and a few basic B&Bs. You start off in your Balrog game, but so to start off, we'll go through his normals. We've got, to start, his lights. Stand Light Kick, a free frame normal, goes into a tight combo. It is not cancelable into anything but the target combo around plus one on block and plus two on hit so you're not really gonna be linking from this but you will be linking into this from your other lights and sometimes even your mediums to try and get some extra damage on it's a very nice confirm from a lot of your normals to get into the tie combo and can be a nice stagger tool due to being plus one having very little pushback allowing you to keep going for this dying light kick and eventually get a counter hit and from a counter hit, you can get a combo like that, or a double Stein Light Kick. Next we'll go over is the, the Crouching Light Kick from Barog. Plus 4 on hit, plus 1 on block. One of its main uses is a low catch tool, as well as a way to whiff punish normals that may have a lower hurtbox than usual. That's Crouching Mean Punch and other normals such and his light punches will not connect. The crouching light kick is a way to stop your opponent from walking back during the pressure. As well as a way to get a low confirm. Sometimes it can be a great punish starter as well, linking it into standing light kick, allowing you to once again go into that tie combo with some mad damage going. Next is light punches. We have got standing light punch and crouching light punch. Both of these normals are cancelable. However, you need to know some specifics about their cancelability. Standing Light Punch only goes into Light Punch Straight, EX Straight, EX Low, and Light Kick Open. While Crouching Light Punch has two extra ones on top of everything from Standing Light Punch, which is EX Upper. That Light Punch does not go into EX Upper, as you can see, he blocks it there. And Medium Punch Straight. The cancel of into medium punch straight is very tight, you can't delay it. You will get blocked. The cancel timing for that is very strict though, so do not worry, most of the time you will connect without medium straight, as you're not going to be confirming those light normals. It's pretty light but straight. Light sound language is not going to medium punch straight, we see you there. Now, both these lights are plus three on block. The standing light punch is plus five on hit, however, so it does go into standing mean punch as a link, while crouching light punch does not. The standing light punch is more of a link tool and a farther reaching poke or stagger pressure tool than crouching light punch, which is more for the bigger damage, bigger reward from just getting two jabs in a row than the standing light punch is. Also, Crouching Light Punch is capable of tick throwing from it, while from a standing light punch, you're just slightly out of the range. So it's knowing the pushback on these normals. That light punch is a tiny bit more pushback, while the Crouching Light Punch is a bit less. At least a bit more reward from hitting those lights, while standing light punch can lead to a lot more reward from counter hits. It goes over his light normals, so go into the mediums. Start off his medium kicks. Standing medium kick is a very decent stagger tool. Much less pushback than Crouching Medium Punch from further away, from far away Crouching Medium Punch is a bit more pushback. Plus 2 on block meaning you're going to need to go into the lights to deal with 3 frame characters like Ryu if you want to frame trap. It's a very good whiff punish tool, due to its shorter range, if your opponent is whiffing buttons, then this can be a good option to try and whiff punish as you're not going to get caught from far away that easily by your opponent, they need to commit a bit harder. Stein Miki also has the benefit of going into the Stein Miki, Stein Miki tight combo, as well as on hit linking into standing meme punch, giving you quite a bit of damage. It's not forced to standing states, so even though upper might be max damage from this, medium kick upper, it will not be used as often now. Something you should know is similar to standing light punch and crouching medium crouching light punch. Standing medium kick and crouching medium punch have similar properties. Standing medium kick goes into heavy punch straight as a cancel and it will combo while crouching medium punch does not. Standing medium kick also goes into heavy kick low while crouching medium punch does not. 
difficulty is being blocked. You cannot take throw from standing mean kick as with most mediums in Street Fighter 5. They're just out of their range. That comes with standing mean kick. Let's go on to crouching medium punch. I'll be going on to crouching medium kick and standing mean punch in just a second. But these two are your main pressure buttons. So crouching medium punch, very little pushback up close. But farther away, a bit more pushback. Not as great. Close to unblock, similar to standing meme kick, and as we've gone over, does not go into a heavy punch straight on hit like the standing meme kick does. So it's a lot less reward, but it's a lot less risk. It's a great poke as well due to its very far horizontal range. And you can really bully in neutral with this. This, is one of your fa this will be one of your favourite buttons in neutral due to its far range, short recovery, and quick start up as both standing meme kick and crouching meme punch are six frames. Usually you're going to medium punch straight or medium kick low from your mediums. Especially crouching medium punch. And you mostly will be starting your pressure with a medium, going into a light and then back into a medium for an easy pressure sequence. Crouching medium punch will be your usual pressure starter, will be your neutral control button as it covers a lot of space. It's not that niche, it covers so many different options. As a poke, it's a pressure tool, it's a tick throw tool, it's a meaty tool. So a whiff punish tool due to its far range. And that covers the standing meme kick and crouching meme punch. Let's go on to the crouching meme kick. Crouching meme kick is a far reaching poke that does go into the crouching meme kick tight combo, which also hits low. So you have a two hitting low tight combo on Balrog, which can catch your opponent walking back, trying to go for a standing normal instantly after you force him to block. It has extremely far horizontal range. And as it hits low, this can be a good harass tool compared to crouching medium punch as it reaches a tiny bit further. Many Balrogs like to activate V-Trigger from crouching medium kick tag combo. This can be good on read, however, due to how it is on block, it can be a big risk as you're ending your turn prematurely by leaving yourself negative 2. I would recommend this if you want to read someone walking back, but in neutral, there are many other activations they could go into. That was crouching meek, it really not cancelable into anything but a tie combo. And V trigger. Carrying on, we'll go on to standing meat punch. Standing meat punch is a great button. This thing does not go very far, but if you look at it, it looks like an anti-air. It goes upwards, it covers a lot of space, it's very fast being five frame startup. It is not going to use this pressure tool too often, it is only zero on block. Your opponent can sit a turn with a free frame and you'll trade if you go for your free frame. So it's not really in the pressure with me often. as quite a bit of pushback. It's not really going to take throw from this at all. It is cancelable. Allowing you to go into MK low. And medium punch straight. As well as medium kick open and EX open. As well as all the other EX extenders. This is slightly confirmable. It's one of Barrow's more confirmable normals. However, Due to its short horizontal range, not hitting low, it's not going to be used to confirm too often. You cannot link from this on hit, it's only plus two, so you'll be linking into it most of the time during your combos. It's mostly safe for an anti-air and a link tool, and can be sometimes used in a niche situation similar to Balrog's name Mew Kick as a whiff punish tool to catch your opponent whiffing buttons due to its short horizontal range, but very good hitboxes. That covers his mediums and now on to his heavies. To start off, I'm going to cover one of Balrog's best heavy punch buttons. Standing heavy punch, although may not have the best on hit and on block value, being only zero on hit and minus three on block, is a crush counter button. Being a crush counter button means if you count it someone during a startup or catch someone during a counter state, they'll be crush countered, giving you a very nice knockdown, which you can double dash afterwards and get some okey. Due to this, it makes it an amazing poke to control a lot of space. You can set yourself up spacing traps, try and force your opponent to retaliate, control a lot of space. It does have a lot of recovery, meaning it can be prone to jump-ins, so make sure you are spacing this correctly so you don't get caught by a straight jumping. You're most going to use that control space and end your strings with once you're out of the range. Ending it with that could put you at a spacing where you like that straight, it's pretty well spaced. 
it's mainly the space control that comes with this. There's quite a lot of damage on hit and quite a lot of stun. Allowing you to harass and get that stun gauge built up quickly if your opponent wants to try and keep pressing buttons on move forward in neutral. The space control this button gives is too good to pass up on. Do not overlook this button. But make sure you are not overusing it as your opponent can catch on and start jumping in. As with many heavy buttons now. From standing heavy punch to standing heavy kick. Standing heavy kick is also a crush counter button. All of Barok's heavy buttons are crush counters. Standing heavy kick has quite a lot of range. From far ranges, you are not getting any links. It's plus 7. So you can link it to crouching knee kick, crouching knee punch, the lights. However, from some ranges... Normals were with. Now we want to stand me with this range. Stick to crouching medium kick or a crouching medium punch. It is plus three on block. This is a great bully button. You toss this out, you are plus, and your opponents can be scared to take that turn because they likely get counter hit. However, you're not close for enough for any throw. Mix-ups need, need to walk forward slightly to get that throw. And sometimes you just outside of range. However, is this a good button to throw out? It is very good to throw out in a neutral sense when you're in range. This button has been nerfed over the scenes to have much more recovery on whiff. Being 22 frames recovery makes it so a lot of the cast can whiff punish reasonably well on a reaction to so be careful just tossing this button out too often. In neutral, this button is amazing due to its counter hits. Gives you a full combo into heavy kick upper than light straight. Giving you a nice bit of damage, a good knockdown, it's a great corner carry. Don't overlook this button during pressure. That'd be a great meaty tool, but due to being 9 frame startup, you're not going to be ending your pressure in this. You're not going to be continuing your pressure with this. But you can try and stagger with it if your opponent is known to delay tech or delay buttons. From the standing state to the crouching state, we're going to be looking at this crouching heavy punch. Crouching heavy punch is your main link tool. Sorry, your main combo tool. Crouching heavy punch, hard kick, upper, uh, uh, is... One of your best combo routes. It is not something you can confirm into crouching heavy punch. Is not a confirmable normal, but from a jump in, this is your maximum damage. For a punish, this is your maximum damage if your opponent is minus eight or more. If you can get a crouching heavy punch, you are dealing as much damage as possible. It does crush counters, so can be used to punish those counter hit states very well. It does the most damage. For a crush counter, however, in the corner, this crush counter is very inconsistent. You are likely to go underneath with your dash straight, unless you are very good at timing. From the crush counter, you get a crash aim punch, heavy kick upper, EX straight. Or medium straight, depending on how you're feeling. This is mainly an anti air tool. It is a combo tool, but also a great anti air. Standing medium punch covers a lot of close jump ins as well as some jump ins around Barog's head. Crouching hair punch can cover cross ups, and due to being a crouching state, can beat some of those early jump ins to deal with Barog's anti airs. The mix up between crouching hair punch and standing medium punch is big to deal with your anti airs to make sure your opponent isn't able to deal with one. Having the muscle memory on both is important. Crouching heavy punch similar to standing mean kick cancels into heavy punch straight, heavy kick low, and is special as it is the only normal in Barog's toolkit to cancel into heavy kick upper and work as a combo. About covers it for crouching heavy punch. Now to the sweep. Barog's sweep is a sweep. It's just that it's a hardest hitting normal. It's around 100 damage from his stun. Very minus on block. Highly punishable. However, for some of the cast, you can space this to be unpunishable without going for a special. Like, say, Hadouken on Ryu, or a Tenko on Kareen, or a Dash Punch on Balrog. Would I recommend this as a neutral tool? Not particularly. It is a great whiff punish tool due to its far range. Some characters' normals retract very quickly, making it hard to whiff punish with Crouching Me, Punch, or Crouching Me Kick. A sweep can reach from that far away, allowing you to get a knockdown very easily. This knockdown is very, very good, leaving you plus 5 on quick rise and plus 10 on back rise. Gives you a lot of time to react to the back rise and the quick rise, giving you a lot of time. It is one of our better V-Tree activation options. Up close, and very plus on block, allowing us to start our pressure. Very safe activation as well, and like every other Barok Heavy, 
crush counters, giving a hard knockdown, allowing you to go for a lot of dashes to get some corner carry, as well as go for some dirty setups, like maybe with a overhead, if you want to try and deal with that. That's enough about Barog's normals on the ground. Let's talk about his air normals. Barog's air normals, we don't have a cross-up, unlike every other character in the cast. Instead, we have some nice aerial normals. Jumping Light Punch is a great anti-air option and can be used to deal with some jumpings due to how its hitboxes interact. I cannot show you how Jumping Light Punch works. You only need to trust me that its hitbox is extremely good. However, its hit stun is not the greatest. You're not going to get a big combo from this or confirm into it. But it's a great anti-air option. Jump Back Jab is amazing. Jump Back Light Punch will work a treat. Jumping Light Kick is our main instant overhead tool. You can catch your opponent blocking low or moving to a low state with a Jumping Light Light Kick. Close it around. It's our only instant overhead option. It's a good air-to-air -air option being very fast and very difficult for your opponent to deal with. Good hitbox priority in the air, but it's not really a jumping option. Jumping Meal Punch is an air-to-air -air option. It's an option against those jumpings where they're very up close, but you want to try and get an air reset. You want to try and be left close. If my opponent was jumping forward or Vega was doing Barcelona, jumping me punch would be a great option to catch him as he's going up or coming down. You're not really going to be using it too often as a jump back option against those cross ups due to how high the hitboxes are on jumping me and punch. Jumping me and kick is a stupidly good jumping button. This button reaches from very far away. You can catch your opponent throwing fireballs from extremely far and if you want to play a DP uppercut game you can empty jump and their DP will likely win. This is a button from those far jumpings and has quite a bit of hit stun so you can go into that crouching hair punch if you are ready. Jumping heavy punch is once again another air to air normal as well as a far jumping normal to deal with those pesky fireball games. Jump in, reach from very far, follow them from far away. You're usually going to be too far away to get a crouching hair punch, so you can mount a hit stun it hides and go straight into an EH straight or even a light straight by holding charge in the air. You're not going to be using this very option often as a jumping tool, but most as air to air tool, which is a neutral jumping, and a far jumping tool. Our best jumping normal is coming up with Jumping Heavy Kick. Jumping Heavy Kick is an insane button with a very deep hitbox. You can catch your opponent trying to anti with normals very easily. Does a, quite a bit of damage, quite a bit of stun, leaves you very close and has enough hit stun and block stun to be a huge threat on offense. You jump in with this, you left very close, you can do whatever you want. You jump in with this and it hits. Easy link into Crouching Heavy Punch if you're ready for the timing. That about covers his normals. Let's go over his specials. Barog specials are mainly straights, uppers, and dash lows, all of which have their different uses. Let's start with a dash straight. Dash straight, similar to standing heavy punch, is a beautiful poke. You need to space it so it is safe on block, because if your opponent blocks it, they can punish it if you are left Close. A lot of the cast like Sakura and Ryu can polish it from a lot of ranges with their standing light kick. This will be your main neutral control tool. You control a lot of space and you should be treating it similar to how a Shoto treats a fireball. It is mainly used for space control, mainly used to be safe. It's mainly used to harass your opponent and force an action such as a neutral jump or for them to walk closer to you so you can start throwing them, pressuring them with your very good up close buttons or staying outside your range so you can start walking in and you force them slowly towards the corner. Your three versions of dash punch you have light, does the least damage but is the most safe. Medium which gives a bit more range, does a bit more damage but not any more stun. This will mainly used around this range where your opponent just outside your light punch dash straight range you just poke away from far away. Heavy punch dash straight is not a poke. Do not fall into the trap of using heavy punch dash straight as a poke. It is just a combo tool. It is very risky. Its main use is how close it leaves you on hit compared to the other dash straight in Barog's kit. It is mainly a combo tool. Do not fall into the trap of using it as a poke. Now, 
that covers his straights. Let's cover his dash lows. Dash lows all do 10 less damage than their dash straight counterparts. However, they do catch your opponent's low. This can be a good tool to catch your opponent dancing about in neutral and can be spaced to be safe on block. Although it is minus 7, I have lots of the cast struggle to punish a very well spaced dash low. Light kick dash low is a tool you'll be using to space. Medium kick dash low and heavy kick dash low are much more finicky to space and they travel much farther, making it hard space in a range we normally doing light dash straights. The reason why I use medium or heavy is mainly for the knockdown they give and not much else. Next up is our uppers. Uppers are a very niche tool. They whiff on crouching opponents, so you'll be using it as your main combo tool. They all do 100 damage. Now if you do heavy, light, or medium, they will all be doing the same damage on hit. The main use of these uppers is to catch your opponent jumping. Light kick for close up, medium kick for further away. Heavy Kick does not have this use due to being extremely slow and is mainly just used as a combo tool from Crouching Heavy Punch as Crouching Heavy Punch causes a standing state and cancels into Heavy Kick Upper for a full combo. That covers the basis of our specials. Early on, most players may like neutral jumping in those ranks and using uppers and anti-air can be a good tool. Upper is also used as combo fodder if your opponent's standing or you catch them low. For example, with a crouching light kick, you can go into a standing light punch after catching them low and get an upper for a nice knockdown. Let's cover the EX specials. EX dash straight is not the neutral control tool you think it is. It leaves you plus one, yes. That is true, but you're left too far away to really put on any mix. You're very far away, you need to walk up to start pressuring. Using this from far away makes it so the dash punch takes longer to start. This is highly reactable. Doing this from full screen is a no-go. You will get punished very hard for trying to do this in the slightest. It's a great combo extension tool and allows you with V skill 1 to get some bigger damage. I use a V skill peak extender to go into another EX straight. EX dash low is an extremely fast low hitting special. It has the same stats no matter where you are on the screen, so be warned fighting against this. It does 10 less damage than the E straight counterpart, similar to how the lows do 10 less damage than straights. It gives an even better knockdown than a low normally would, allowing you to go up and pressure, being plus 5, giving the same meaties as sweep. This also has its stun locked on one hit, while EX straight has it on two, meaning if your opponent is near stun, you should be ending in an EX low. Finally, EX upper. EX upper is a special tool as it has free frame armor. So if your opponent is blocking and then takes to take the turn, you're taking a huge gamble going for an EX upper. This is a huge risk. This is a massive risk to do. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. This tool is just to deal with people pressing buttons on the way down on their neutral jump. It does the most damage out of all of our EX specials and does the same stun as all of our EX specials. A great close up tool. It is not comboable, you can combo into it. We have no wake up options, there is no full invincibility on Balrog. We have one last special to cover, and that is Turnaround Punch. Turnaround Punch is minus two for all of its levels except Final Tap. From level four onwards, it is throw invincible, meaning any throw attempts will be dodged by the tap. It is projectile invincible for all of its levels, allowing you to go through fireballs within the matter whether you picked V skill 1 or V skill 2. Its damage on hit is pretty pitiful. It increases with each level, starting at 80 damage in level 1, then increasing by 10 each time, with final doing quite a lot of damage. The damage scaling does slowly but surely start ramping up much more than 10 each time 
and can go up to 20 each time. Final tab does 350 damage, similar to how much damage our CA does. You won't be using this too often, this is a very niche tool, mainly used for combos from crush counters, a way to escape fireball pressure, and in some specific matchups can be used by holding it until level 4 and level 7 for that upper body invincibility to deal with something like that Zangi standing heavy punch or Abigail's standing heavy punch. The final thing we should cover is Balrog CA, a very slow CA, around 8 frames start up and up close will cause a side switch, so do be careful using this. The side switch can be your downfall if you are near the corner and can put you in a disadvantageous position. It does 330 damage and can cause a chip kill compared to other specials that Balrog has. It is projectile invincible, it is fully invincible, it can be used as a wake up tool however due to its slow start up and the cinematic it can be blocked if your opponent has not committed to any options yet. That, that covers his, v his specials, his normals, let's cover his V-triggers and V-skills. V-skill 1 gives you access to an empty V-skill as well as a V-skill punch and a V-skill kick. V-Skill, all forms are projectile invincible. V-Skill is projectile invincible for quite some time. V-Skill P ends it a bit prematurely, while Heavy has the most invincibility. And pardon me, medium kick. The level of V-Skill you do does not change the damage it does. Doesn't matter if you use Heavy, Medium, or Light. V-Skill P is very fast. Is your main tool to punish fireballs? V-Skill K is an overhead, it is the Balrog's only overhead. As you can see he's blocking high now, and if he crouches, it hits. We have one of the few comboable overheads in the game, allowing us to go into standing medium punch into MK low. There's quite a bit of damage. This V-Skill is mainly used for fireball matchups as well as mix-ups as you can cancel many of your straights into a V-Skill to cancel their active frames and go straight into a neutral state once again. This can be used to go through projectiles. All of our dash lows and dash straights can be cancelled. However, uppers cannot be. After cancelling your lows, you can go into an overhead or a V-Skill P if need be. Some special properties some of our EX specials have is our EX straight. The second hit of it can be cancelled into a V skill P, a V skill K, or an MTV skill. This allows for people combo opportunities as well as some mix ups. For example, EX straight into MTV skill is a plus three, allowing us to link into our standing light kick tight combo. On block from EX straight, we can also go into V skill, we can go into overhead. However, this mix up is not real and will only work against players who do not know how to deal with it. Any cancel into V skill on block from the EX straight is interruptible as we are minus 2 from empty, minus 4 into V skill P, and interruptible on overhead. There is not much we can do to make them. Yes, out of the extraits. Only on hits, they have to try and deal with a high low mix up. Like it was V skill 1, let's talk about V skill 2. V skill 2 is a buff to our dash punches. It's 60 frames in order to get the buff. The buff lets us do dash straight without holding charge. So I can walk forward and do a dash punch. This is huge. The dash punches, I'm plus 2 on block except for EX which is plus 4 V skill 2 does not buff our uppers or lows just our dash straights on hit the dash straights cause a juggle state it allows us to juggle and get another dash straight or even an EX straight you can only juggle into EX or light straight, medium and heavy will not be juggled from. Also, totally will not be juggled into, for example, light straight, heavy straight does not work because of how slow heavy straight is. 
We can also get a free V skill to activation from the standing Miku tight combo. Leaving us plus 9 on quick rise and plus 14 on back rise. You will not get much Oki from this, however, it will be your turn still and you will get a free activation that cannot be punished. V skill 2 also has the property of doing free hits. You may think this is very petty, but the free hits can make some matchups go from very difficult to very easy. For example, Zangief normally beats Balrog, however, with the V skill 2, his armor becomes obsolete as we can break it with the V skill 2 punch, allowing us to stop his armor and control space once again. V skill 2 does not have the V skill cancels that the other V skill 1 has, however, it does increase damage on Balrog by quite a bit. Now the caveat that you need to have V skill 2 up for the damage to be buffed. V skill 2 is a much better neutral control tool than V skill 1. However, the fireball usage is not as great. You need to start relying on tap as there is no projectile invincibility from the V skill 2. One more thing to mention is that V skill 2 dash punches all have 10 extra damage. Heavy will do 110 instead of the usual 100. That covers it for our V skills. Let's talk about the V triggers. V trigger 1 allows us to do Wrecker cancels. A Wrecker cancel is cancelling of a special into another special. This can be done on hit and on block. We have two options. A punch and a kick. Both are left minus two of a V skill punch. Or the V trigger one punches do more stun while the kicks do more damage. Knowing this can mean a difference between stunning your opponents or killing the opponents. The kick causes a launching state, which can allow for some extended combos that you would not normally get, making our dash punches in neutral much more potent as they can be confirmed into an upper and then into a V skill P if you pick V skill 1. V skill 2 has no synergy with V trigger 1. So if you're going to pick V skill 2, I would not recommend picking V trigger 1. We can also cancel our records from our dash lows and our uppers. V trigger 1 is mainly a combo tool and can be used for mix-ups which is covered by Briner very well. As a start off, I'll go over it simply. We can go and cancel after a Wrecker into a V skill 1, which allows us to do an overhead between a high low as well as a V skill P, which lets us a throw, shimmy, button, mix-up. V trigger 1 has a lot more going for it than can be covered in this video, so if you'd like to check out the V trigger 1, explanation in Barrow's Box of Basics would be much appreciated. Carrying on to V Trigger 2, which is much more simple. V Trigger 2 is just a command grab. That is all it is. It, it literally is just a command grab. You cannot take V Trigger 2. You can not. You cannot be pressing buttons against V Trigger 2 as unlike most command grabs in the game. It is cancelable into, allowing for some extra combo potential. V trigger 2 is cancelable into from our crouching knee kick tie combo, as well as our standing light kick target combo. It does 350 stone and gives us a good knockdown. Not enough to loop the V trigger 2 command grabs together, but close enough so that your opponent is scared to press buttons so you can start going for these fake command grab loops mid screen. In the corner, we have a true command grab loop similar to Zangi from Mika, although the timing is very strict. Learning this is not recommended, however, just having the threat of a command grab is crucial. V trigger 2 synergizes well with both V skill 1 and V skill 2, but with V skill 2, we can get a true 50 50. A guess from anywhere on the screen with one EX bar, a V skill 2, and V trigger ready. As EX straight during V skill 2 leaves us plus 4, and our command grab is 7 frame startup, 
Your opponent is forced to guess. They can't press a button. They have to either go for a throw invincible move, a jump, a back dash. Which you can then exploit by going for a card for a back dash. A normal normal. Those jumps. And so on. V Trigger 2 is mainly used for the fear of the command grab. The command grab always does less damage than your normal combo. As you can see there. So having it there should be more of a threat. You should only be using command grab to try and get your opponent to take riskier options like jumping, like pressing a button. It is to open your opponent up by forcing themselves to do something. Well, as we're covering V-Triggers, let's cover V-Trigger activations. The main ones you should know are... V-Skill Punch. This is plus 17 on hit and plus 11 on block. It is a very plus activation and it's very easy to use. EX Dash Low is a very great activation from full screen and close up. And if they block it, we are left plus 5. For Balrog, this sets up a 50-50 situation, similar to G. However, do not rely on this too much as it can be V-reversaled. Our target combos are very good at activations as we can command grab afterwards, we can press a button and it cannot be V-reversaled. On hit as well, we get a very big link from the Stein Like Tie combo. Only gets a A punch. Sweet has has been covered and it's a good activation for a knockdown. Crouching Meek Tie combo is a fine activation if you read a backwalk. However, Crouching Meek on its own is an amazing activation that allows you to link into Crouching A punch as well as a dash straight from farther away. However, V Trigger 2 and V Trigger 1 have different V Trigger activations. V Trigger 2 cannot be cancelled into from a dash straight. That is non EX. However, V Trigger 1 can. I would not recommend cancelling into V Trigger from a dash straight unless it is in a combo. If you do it on block, you are around minus 3 or minus one depending on the activation instead if you would like to activate v-trigger one from a dash straight i recommend going for a dash low leaves you plus three allowing you to start a mix-up the same activations apply for v-trigger one as before v skill p ex dash low the tight combo and crouching me kick I hope this has helped, this is a basic guide about all of Barog's kits. I've not been too in depth on how we should play, but I hope that this extremely long guide can help you understand Barog's toolkit. Thank you for watching and take care.